For animals like us, most of our life is lived out as one many-celled creature, the stranger parts of our life cycle left forgotten, relegated to small parts of the greater whole. Moss doesn't do this. Each part of its life is lived loud and strange and unafraid of the questions that it raises. It's difficult to describe just how weird and different the lives of mosses are from anything that we're used to, so in this video I'm going to try and explain it better by doing what God clearly never intended and applying the way moss works to dogs. Now I want you to be aware this is the most cursed thing I have ever created. You won't like this, but I love this. Let's start with a normal dog. He's a good dog. Okay, now I want you to imagine that instead of shooting sperm, your dog releases a cloud of microscopic dog spores into the air. One of these spores will follow. It lands somewhere nice, and over time it grows and develops into a sprawling network of tiny dog tubes. As the dog tube network grows and expands, it begins to take on a larger shape, forming the multi-celled creature I have chosen to name Sperm Dog. Despite having the DNA of a sperm cell, sperm dog is its own fully multicellular creature, and from here, it just lives its doggy life. It eats tasty food, enjoys good smells, frolics in the sun with the other sperm dogs and egg dogs. Did I mention there are egg dogs? There are egg dogs. Some of the spores became egg dogs, and now they're here. Now, the place where sperm dog and egg dog live is quite damp, and occasionally, it floods. In the presence of water, Sperm Dog's special ability activates. It releases sperm, each carrying a tiny copy of its DNA. The sperm swim through the water and impregnate a nearby egg dog who is also in the water. Reminder that this is real. It's real, and it happens to moss. Nature is incredible. Anyway, so one of the egg dog's eggs unites with the incoming sperm, and the DNA from sperm and egg combine to create a new unborn dog fetus, this time with a full set of dog DNA. Huzzah! Finally, we've come full circle back to a normal dog. Egg dog will carry this normal dog inside itself until it's ready to be born. All of this has been pretty standard stuff so far. When this normal, regular puppy is ready to be brought into the world, it squeezes out of egg dog part way and then never finishes and remains attached for its entire life. It will never detach and will always be dependent on egg dog for sustenance. Now, there are two interesting things to notice here. The first is that egg dog is just continuing about its life. You'd expect it to need to rest or something, but it's not really hindered by the existence of normal dog at all. The little guy just kind of exists there now as a bonus friend. The second thing is that at the end of normal dog that came out of egg dog is the tail end. It's always the tail end. Does the head even exist? That is beyond the scope of our example, and I will not extrapolate at this time. From birth, normal dog's genitals have been sealed away in a protective pod waiting for maturity. Once normal dog is fully grown, the capsule bursts, and dog spores are unleashed into the air to begin the cycle anew. What, what about the, that normal dog in the beginning? That dog never existed. Thanks for watching. I tricked you, by the way, there was never a normal dog.